So, um, have you always lived in Augusta, Georgia? No. Where, how did you end up living in Augusta? Um, retired from the military, relocated to this area. So for me, I've always lived in Augusta. Okay. Um, lived right up the road always. Um, and, uh, so my family home lives in like a single family structure type house. Um, so could you tell me what kind of home you live in? Uh, similar, uh. A single family structure, um, five bedroom home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So, have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop solar for your home, your property, or as part of your business, or as part of a program through your unit? I have never. Yeah. Um. Have you ever been interested in solar? Yeah. Okay. So, being that you own a home, why was that a choice you made not to adopt solar, or was it something like it just didn't come to your mind when you were thinking? It was never brought to my attention, so I never considered it. Okay. So, did y'all like build your house, or you just bought it and it, it was bought already, an already purchased home? So it was never like it wasn't included. Or anything right, like. right. So I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. I'm going to give you a map of the United States. And if you could just circle where you think um, rooftop solar is mostly adopted in the country. Yeah. So why do you think those two places versus the rest of the country? When I think of solar, I think of direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. So I know that in the southeast we have heavy trees. So I imagine you're not going to get a lot of direct sunlight. But I'm almost sure that out west in Texas area, there's not as much tree coverage that would prevent direct sunlight. That's the only reason why. So why do you think people have the most solar rooftops and like the besides the general landscape and uh, nature effects like the people in that area, why do you think they adopt rooftops? I'm going to assume that it's got to be cost effective. I just don't know the numbers on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing again, just with the state of Georgia. Okay. So just mark, circle, whatever you think, where you think solar would be mostly adopted. Yeah. That's, I'll say in the northwest region of the state. So what makes that area different from Augusta? I remember that that area is mountainous, so it's higher up. Okay. So the elevation is different. Um, Augusta, again, we have hills, but we don't have mountains. So I'm imagining with all the trees that we wouldn't have the same amount of ability to get direct sunlight. Okay. Um, so why do you think the people in that community have the most solar tops? If I had to guess, I because they're, my understanding, mountainous regions, they're not sitting and living on top of each other. So to get electricity... You'd have to be have a strong infrastructure. I imagine the western, northwestern area of Georgia does not have strong infrastructure, so that's the best way to get electricity to homes, mm -hmm. or power, I should say, to homes. Um, what about most of your close friends in the state of Georgia? Do they have solar rooftop? Not one. Not one. Not one. Why do you think that is? I think out of ignorance, honestly. We, they just don't know. Okay. Um, so now, if you don't mind, we're going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. So, if you will, please tell me about your regular day with food and what your meals and snacks typically look like. Morning to afternoon is going to be coffee, juice, water, and some kind of uh, sugary snack. Some kind of honey bun or something like that. Um, I usually eat a salad after lunch, and then there's a heavy meal for dinner. There's going to be a lot of sodas and juices involved. Okay. Um, so for me, it's I'm at home during the summer, so it's just eat something for breakfast at the house, something for dinner. Right. Normally it's skipping breakfast altogether, and then something big for, right. dinner. for dinner. We'll either go out to eat or um, something like that. So could you tell me what your go-to meal is and why? Wow, my go-to meal... I have to quickly think about that. I would have to say a salad because it's so quick to make. And it's accessible at the grocery store, the local subway, 
salads are available and they don't stay heavy on you all night. So how often do you cook your own meals? Oh, uh, out of a seven day week, three days, three days. So are you the only person in your house that makes the, decis the decisions about food purchases in your household? No, I am not. Okay. What are the food decisions like for your house? Um, or what factors do you think come into play? Always health. Um, so as I get older, I have to be more health conscious. Um, time. It's always a factor because everyone is on a schedule and we only have so much time in the evening to be together. Uh, I think the last would be money, the, the finance of it. Okay. That's it. Um, how often do you purchase food for your household? About twice a month. I mean, I run to the store maybe once a week to get missing items, but major purchases twice a month. Um, so could you paint this picture for me? Let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? That looks like bulk packages of water, um, a large concentration of frozen meats and vegetables and quick freezer foods like wa Eggo waffles, uh, morning sausages and things of that nature. Um, so when it comes to feeding your family, what challenges might you face? For example, my family is a super picky family, and mm. then there's also certain food allergies in the family, so we have to worry about those when it comes into decisions. I think the biggest thing I have, because I have younger kids in the home, is the volume of food to cook. How much? Because the appetites are growing mm -hmm. fast, so one day you may cook, a small amount the next day you have to triple that amount so it'll be the volume